The time has come for Kit Guru to look at some Intel Z890 motherboards, and we have a showcase of five boards from ASRock, all with that chipset. This is the Z890 Pro A, sells for about £180, including the AT. We have this Phantom Gaming Z890M, M for Micro ATX, Riptide Wi-Fi. That's about £250, including VAT. The Phantom Gaming Z890 Lightning Wi-Fi is about the same price at £260. That's ATX. For around £290, you can have this Phantom Gaming Z890i Nova Wi-Fi. I means Mini ITX. And top of the tree, just under £400, £384 including VAT to be pedantic, we have the Z890 Tai Chi Lite. That's a spread of five very different motherboards, so let's take a look at the features and see what ASRock offers you for your money. We're going to start with the Pro A, which retails for £182 including VAT here in the UK. Certainly the styling is understated, however there is also a nod to performance, and that doesn't really sound very Pro-ish to us. This thing, the Memory OC Shield, which looks like a sticker of some sort, and a note in the box telling us not to remove the Memory OC Shield because it might hurt performance. That's unusual. Beyond that we have further indications of cost cutting, you don't have a fixed I.O. shield. It's a separate part, like in the good old days. Haven't seen that for a while, but the absence of the I.O. shield means that you can look behind this shroud and you can see lots of fresh air. In terms of accessories in the box, you get some SATA cables and you get a screw for your M.2 drive. Plus that notice and a few other bits of paperwork, but that is it. It's all down to the basic hardware which is indeed quite basic, but it does have one or two little quirks. The VRMs are a 16 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 80 amp Dr. Moss arrangement, and the VRM controller is by RichTech. Memory support, there are four DIMMs of DDR5, but you can go up to 9066 if you overclock. In terms of expansion, the primary slot is PCI Express Gen 5 by 16, but you also get two Gen 4s by 4 and one Gen 4 by 1. Those lower three slots powered by the chipset, the primary from the processor. So if you have many expansion cards or more than one expansion card, this motherboard might indeed look of interest. When it comes to storage, the CPU powers one Gen 5 M.2 and one Gen 4 M.2. The chipset powers two Gen 4 M.2s and there are four SATA 6 gigabit per second. On the rear I.O. panel, we have one Thunderbolt 4 and one USB-C rated at 20 gigabits per second, along with an internal header for a second USB-C 20 gigabit per second. Returning to the rear I.O. we have one USB-A rated at 10 gigabits per second and two USB-A's rated at 5 gigabits per second, along with headers for four more of those ports. For USB 2 support we have four ports on the rear I.O. and internal headers for four more. For networking we have 2.5 gigabit Realtek Ethernet and there's no Wi-Fi. As you can see, the audio is fairly rudimentary, but we do have eight PWM fan headers. So for under 200 pounds, it's a relatively basic motherboard, but it does have its points of interest. Moving up in price to 247 pounds, including VAT, we have the physically smaller Phantom Gaming Z890M Riptide Wi-Fi, the M for Micro ATX. So we have a single expansion slot, but we have enough space for two M.2s below the expansion slot, as well as one M.2 above it. It's Phantom Gaming. That means you get this logo plate on the aluminium shroud over the rear I.O. shield. In terms of accessories in the box, we have another of these notices telling us not to remove the memory OC shield sticker. This is a Wi-Fi model. We get Wi-Fi antennae, SATA cables, RGB cable. That's a temperature sensor. We've got a sticker. We've got a keyboard cap. And then we have the question, how many features can you pack into a Micro ATX motherboard? And the answer is 
quite a lot. The VRMs are a 16 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 80 amp Dr. Moss setup and it uses a rich tech controller just like the Pro A that we've already seen. Memory support we have four DIMMs of DDR5 that can go up to 9466 if you overclock. We have a single PCI Express expansion slot Gen 5 by 16 and that's powered by the CPU. For storage we have one Gen 5 M.2 and one Gen 4 M.2 powered by the CPU while the chipset is providing one Gen 4 M.2 and four SATA 6 gigabit per second. On the rear I.O. panel we have 2.5 gigabit killer Ethernet. We have the antenna points for the 2x2 two two Intel Wi-Fi 6E and internally there's Bluetooth 5.3. For ports and connectors we have two Thunderbolt 4s. There's an internal header for a USB-C rated at 20 gigabits per second and on the rear I.O. we have two USB-A's rated at 10 gigabits per second. We also have four USB-A's rated at 5 gigabits per second and a header to support two more of those ports. For USB 2 there are two ports on the rear and there are headers for four more ports. We've got seven PWM fan connectors around the board. About the only thing you could say is missing. We don't have any micro buttons. We don't have a debug display, but this is a fully featured motherboard. It's just a bit shorter than an ATX board. Where the Micro ATX Phantom Gaming board costs 247 pounds, including VAT, this Phantom Gaming Z890 Lightning Wi-Fi costs 260 pounds. In the real world, that's the same price. There are, however, a significant number of differences that make this board, in my opinion, much better value. For example, it's got Wi-Fi 7 rather than Wi-Fi 6E. But look at this. We've got a quick release heatsink on the main M.2, and we've got a quick release heatsink on those two M.2s there. This M.2, on the other hand, is bare, which I suppose is useful if your M.2 drive has a heat sink supplied by the manufacturer. Anyway, quality of life. In terms of the accessories, you get the do not peel off the memory sticker sheet, Wi-Fi antennae, RGB cable, SATA cables, and that's the temperature sensor. Nothing surprising there. And so we move on to the features. The VRMs are an 18 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 80 amp SPS Dr. Moss, but this time the VRM controller is by monolithic power. For memory support, we have four DIMMs of DDR5 up to 9466 if you overclock. On the expansion slots, we have a Gen 5 by 16 from the CPU and two PCI Express Gen 4 by 4s from the chipset. For storage, the CPU powers a Gen 5 M.2 and a Gen 4 M.2, and we have two more Gen 4s from the chipset and four SATA 6 gigabit per second. For networking, we have 2.5 gigabit killer Ethernet, 2x2 two two Intel Wi Fi 7, and Bluetooth 5.4. On the rear I.O. panel, we have two Thunderbolt 4s. There's a front panel header for a USB-C rated at 20 gigabits per second. On the rear I.O. we have two USB-A's rated at 10 gigabits per second, four USB-A's rated at 5 gigabits per second, headers for four more of those USBs for the front, and on the rear we have two USB-2's, and we have headers for four USB-2's at the front. There are eight PWM fan headers, there's no debug display, and there are no micro buttons. It's quite an understated motherboard, but it packs in a whole host of features at a very reasonable price. Our fourth motherboard, the Phantom Gaming Z890i Nova Wi-Fi, is slightly more expensive, £291 including VAT, or around about 300 if we're talking in round money. And yet, Mini ITX, that's what the I stands for. Why is a Mini ITX motherboard more expensive? The answer? as you probably well know is, you have to cram all the features into a much smaller space. Part of the extra cost, for example, is the 10 layer PCB. Packing in more components closer together makes it harder to manage the signals between those various components. Also, we have hardware on the back of this board. That's part of the explanation for how you get all the features into a smaller motherboard. Right, 
let's take a closer look at what we've got. The VRMs are a 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 110 amp SPS Dr. Moss setup with a Renesas controller. We have large heat sinks on the VRMs and they are joined with a heat pipe. Under the shroud over the rear I.O. we have a 30mm fan. The fixed rear I.O. shield is perforated so cool air is drawn in there. The fan is under there and then we have slots here that allow air to flow over the CPU socket. We have support for two DDR5 memory DIMMs and they can run up to 9866 provided you overclock and find fast enough memory. There's a single expansion slot PCI Express Gen 5 by 16 that's obviously for your graphics card. For storage we have a Gen 5 M.2 powered by the CPU. Then on the back of the board we have two Gen 4 M.2s and we also have a couple of SATA connectors. They're powered by the chipset as well. For networking, we have five gigabit Realtek Ethernet on the rear I.O. panel. We have two by two Intel Wi-Fi 7, and we have Bluetooth 5.4. Other ports and connectors, we have two Thunderbolt 4s on the rear I.O. We have a USB-C 20 gigabit per second front panel header. On the rear I.O. there are six USB-A's rated at 10 gigabits per second. There's an internal header for two USB-A's rated at five gigabits per second, and a header for two USB-2s. In other words, all these ports and connectors are high speed, although there are headers for some slower connections should you require them for your case. We have three PWM fan headers. You won't be shocked to learn there are no micro buttons and there is no debug display. And my overall impression is that the Phantom Gaming Z890i Nova Wi-Fi looks absolutely superb. And we're finishing with this Z890 Tai Chi Lite, which sells for £384 here in the UK. The full fat Tai Chi is more like 450. We have a load of accessories. These are fasteners for your M.2 SSDs. We have some SATA cables, more SATA cables, RGB cable. Those are all temp sensors. That's a keyboard cap. And we have a full on Wi-Fi 7 uh, antenna with extension cable. That's all good stuff. The board itself, ATX, and you have all the features you'd expect, including, hurrah, we have a debug display and we have micro buttons. Let's go through the hardware, shall we? The VRMs are a 20 plus one plus two plus one by 110 amp SPS setup, and we have a Rene SAS controller. Memory support, four DIMMs of DDR5 up to 9600 or faster, provided the memory can take it and you overclock. We have a PCI Express Gen 5 by 16 slot from the CPU and one Gen 4 by four from the chipset. However, that shares bandwidth with the fourth M.2. For storage, we have one Gen 5 M.2 and one Gen 4 M.2 powered by the CPU, and we have four Gen 4 M.2s powered by the chipset, along with four SATA 6 gigabit per second. For networking, we have dual Ethernet, we have five gigabit Realtek, and two and a half gigabit Dragon Ethernet. We have two by two Intel Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. For ports and connectors, we have two Thunderbolt 4s on the rear I.O., a USB-C 20 gigabit front panel header, four USB-A 10 gigabit per second on the rear I.O., four USB-A 5 gigabit per second on the rear I.O., and internal headers for four more. For USB 2, we have two ports on the rear I.O., and we have headers for four more. Add in eight PWM fan connectors, you have all the hardware, but let's face it, you've got more hardware than you realistically need. At a guess, what you're missing with this Tai Chi light compared to the full-on Tai Chi, there's no active cooling on the VRM heatsink, uh, there's no backplate. It'll be details like that, but it looks as though the Tai Chi light packs in all the hardware that you require, and when I actually get round to finally reviewing Intel Core Ultra 200S processors, I think I may well give this motherboard a run just to see how it performs. So there we have it, five motherboards from ASRock, the Tai Chi Lite I'm very interested in, also the Z890 Mini ITX, that looks good. The Pro A looks a little bit dull, I'm not at all sure about this Micro ATX Riptide, and I suspect the Phantom Gaming Z890 Lightning Wi-Fi might turn out to be a bargain jewel. However, as we haven't reviewed any of these motherboards, that's just speculation on my part. Don't forget, we're on TikTok, and head over to kitguru.net to read our news and reviews.